Glory. Glad you all made it today. Amen. 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 Yes. Pray for those that couldn't make it, didn't make it, that God will move upon them. Minister to them. Amen. Yes. Amen. Lord. Hallelujah. Wasn't it good to be in the presence of the Lord this morning? Yes. Now it's 11.35 and I want everybody to know that none of that is my fault. <laughs> <coughs> so, can I get a few more minutes from anybody this morning? Show of hands. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. 50 more minutes. Praise God. All right. <laughs> Got till 2 o'clock. And we're wearing air tricks. <laughs> They're like, well, you, you'll get us once, Pastor. You won't get us twice. Yeah, right. Wow. <laughs> we'll remember that one. Yeah. Glory. I don't have to use it often. <laughs> Amen. Well, I could be short this morning. I, I have no notes. I have nothing but the Holy Ghost and a few scriptures he's given me today. And uh, But I know that God has given for today. Uh, uh, Pastor, tell me all the songs that you uh, sung today and picked were right in tune with what the Holy Spirit was ministering yes. today. Yes. I'm so thankful that the same Holy Spirit flows. Yes. And, uh, you know, if you've been serving God very long, when I start this message, you can say, well, that's old hat. But I've learned that nothing is old hat with God. Nothing is, his revelations are new every day. And the word of God is alive. The Bible says it's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing the very asunder. Amen? Amen. But uh, if you have your Bibles, turn to Lamentations. Chapter 3. It's a very short book in the Bible. Do you know why it's so short? God was tired of lamenting. <laughs> oh my God. You are too much. <laughs> I probably should pray before I start. Lord, I come before you today, God. Lord, I pray that you'll have me to speak even as the oracles of God. And God, you'll give uh, people ears to hear what the Spirit is saying. And Lord, I'll step aside and ask you to step in and minister to your people. In Jesus' strong name we pray. And everybody said? Amen. And I was meaning to tell this to the kids. Are, they going to, are you going to tell the children downstairs about the missionary offering? Yeah, so the children, they pay their tithes and offerings every week downstairs. And so we have a missionary fund that we sowed into. And uh, so coming up, Sometime between the middle of October and uh, the middle of November, uh, if you guys remember Bishop Angelo, he's going to be with us from Kenya. And so uh, we got to help him get here through our mission fund that the kids have been putting funds into. So they, they help bring the missionary over to take care of some business, amen? One part of that business is coming to see you all, and you don't want to miss this time, and uh, by faith, uh, me and him are planning my trip for next year. Like the devil said, I would never go, and I'm still not 100%, but uh, I am planning to be back in Kenya next year. Uh, I got the opportunity to go almost 10 years ago now, and uh, the uh, ministry there obviously was in shambles and the enemy had Bishop uh, Angelo just convinced it was over with and people, he had several churches under him and men of God who came in and took over the churches and just, it was just awful and he just lost all hope. But how many know, uh, you've heard me preach many times, everybody needs some crazy faith friends. Just like the man that was on the stretcher, sometime you will be on the stretcher in life. And you better make sure you surrounded yourself with four crazy faith friends that are willing to do whatever it takes to get you to Jesus. Uh, come on, when they got to the house of God, when they knew where Jesus was at, they didn't say, oh man, it's full, we can't get you in there, sorry, we'll come back next service. They drug him up on their, how many of them had man had to have some faith to trust him to drag him up on a roof? Yeah. And then they packed up the roof and God let him down in there. 
Said, if we could just get you to Jesus, do you know how many people would be healed today if they started realizing if they could just get to Jesus? Yes. And they started realizing what Jesus had already done also. Not trying to beg something they already had, but learning to reinforce what Jesus already done. Right. Come on. Amen. So when I got there, Bishop Franklin uh, was a, I just preached that message right before I left, I think. God had given it to me. And uh, I got to be a crazy faith friend to Bishop Angelo. And uh, I, now I think there's over 300 churches in Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda. And uh, God's doing a great work. But is it because of me? No. I was just a good donkey. But they're longing for me. Bishop Angelo told me the people, they always ask other people, come, when is, when is Pastor Brian coming again? We want to, but see, I, I'm going to speak a little more about faith this morning, but I didn't plan on this, and I don't think you'll mind. In Africa, I've been to Bolivia, all the other countries I'm at, uh, America did a great job for years sending missionaries. But now America's in need of its own missionaries, yes. and that's where you and I come yes. in. But for years, they were taught if they got hooked up with the right church, the right group, they would fund all of their uh, programs. So that's how they did church in a lot most third world countries. And that's what we as, as Americans had taught them. We go over, we start a program, we send people, and we send money. And so God had me challenge Bishop Angelo <laughs> to do it like how we've done it here and how everybody else has done it by faith. And he came and he was associated with some big, huge ministries, and when they pulled out, I'm talking, you know, a few thousands of members of churches and things, and, and it, it, that's one of the things that left a big hole. And, uh, you know, to be honest with you, in the natural realm, I, this is ministry, but I'm going to get to your message in a minute, you came for something else, but, uh, you know, God's going to me to teach him faith. I thought, man, who am I to teach him anything? Come on. And uh, the last time that Bishop Angelo was here was Five years ago, they were already made a big turnaround then and doing all those things. And the first thing Bishop Angelo was, I'm cutting it short, was so excited to tell me was that all the church stuff was paid for and caught up, and they were in the midst of building this magnificent building. Before, they had just kind of done metal shacks and things. And Bishop Angelo showed me this beautiful church building, they were building stone floors, all the marble stuff. And he said, That's right. The church there has paid for every bit of it themselves. Amen. I've taught them tithes, I've taught them offerings, and they're seeing the blessings of God, and we're paying for it all ourselves. We're not dependent on any outside help. We are now planning to start sending people elsewhere instead of trying to get people to come here. Amen. Oh, and so I can't wait to go back. They, 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 they had a ceremony and all that and dedicated the building. And I wish I could have been there. I was invited, but I can't wait to go back. Not because of the building, but to see the difference in people's lives. Yes. You know, when you're calling, because see, when you're always trying to depend on somebody else to get you through, you're always going to be in want. Right. But when you start learning to depend on God, things change. And so, uh, he's coming. It'll be an awesome time. I felt like to share that. I, so thankful y'all gave me an extra finish. Man, 50 minutes. I just burned up 15. I'll start preaching here in a minute. Well, I guess I'm drinking the water. Glory. Pastor Tammy's staying up here today. I can't tell any stories on her. I should have had a, I should have put it in our marriage vows. You're marrying a pastor. Anything you say and do can and will be used in a sermon. <laughs> She's not smiling. You see somebody <laughs> But today I want to talk to you. Just I want to take a brief moment. I want to talk to you about something that is so simple, so wonderful, so precious, but sometimes so forgotten. And that's about the mercy of God. Where would I be if God hadn't had mercy on me? And do you know what? I hate to break this to you all, but I'm still not perfect. I know that's hard to believe. I know, I know. 
But the longer I serve God, sometimes the more I see my shortcomings, if I'm honest. Where I'm not where I want to be or not where I feel like I need to be. Now, when I feel like I let him down, man, it's hard. I don't know if you've ever been there, but it's just hard. If I don't respond the right way, I know none of you are like that, you know. Bible says be angry and sin not. We have emotions. But I don't know about you. Maybe you're not there. I remember when it was just good to learn to keep my mouth shut. That was a big overkill. You know, not to respond. You know, people for, year, for years when they first came to the church, I know people have learned otherwise, but they thought I didn't have any of those uh, sharp tongue answers, you know, and quips and things. They didn't realize I chewed my tongue off for years because I could have struggled them up one side or down the other, but God had delivered me. But the enemy still would put the temptation, not for myself, but in my spirit to respond in that way. Are you still with me? But, uh, you know, now if I respond sharp with my wife or my children, now listen, the Holy Spirit checks me and if you're still going to be a turd, you can still be a turd. Now, I'm not talking about being ugly. I, now, maybe you are, but uh, that's not what I'm confessing myself this morning. Amen. But in about two seconds then, the enemy starts bringing, in, in, about, in, in like a quarter of a second now, God brings conviction. It's about two seconds after that, the enemy starts trying to bring in condemnation. What's the difference? One leads you to repentance and freedom, and the other one just puts more chains on you and takes you down to the bottom of the pit. Right, right. Okay, y'all get some revelation this yes. morning? But we're going to look at a verse here where it says, God's mercies are new every morning. Now, he just could have said his, his mercies are forever, which is said in other verses. But I'm so thankful that he spoke to us and said, my mercies are new every morning. Because he knew every morning you wake up, you might feel like you needed a second chance. And no matter how many times you need a second chance, every morning he wakes up and says, I've got a fresh group of mercies. I've got a fresh group of undeserved favor to cover that. Now, does he want you living in habitual sin? Absolutely not. Don't, the Bible says don't make a mockery of what he did on the cross. And that's when you just keep sinning when you know you're not supposed to be, okay? We're talking about us being imperfect people. We have a spirit man that's living in a flesh body. You know, my flesh still wants to do stupid stuff, you know? Like eat a whole uh, box of ice cream or something or a whole deep dish pizza, you know? Listen, I'm not up in your Kool-Aid. I said me. Do I let my body do that? No, I know it may look like I do, but I don't because it would not be healthy for me. Now, that's something simple, but I, I could be talking about drugs, alcohol, sex. I could be talking about, you know, whatever else you're using to fill your mind with or try to curb your thing. Big smile. How many in here have responded in a way you didn't feel that you were sorry about in the last week? Don't raise your hand. And how many, how many are so thankful that his mercies were new? But let me tell you, though, what I've learned is that that's usually not the first thing we apply. And I want you to learn to apply it quickly so you can get it under the blood. Because where the blood's been applied, the enemy's been denied. Repentance is the gateway to freedom. Come on. That's a James uh, 5.19. If we confess our sins that God is faithful and just forgive us and wash us clean of all unrighteousness. But how many know you have to confess it? Yes. But he didn't say you had to beat yourself up with it. How can you not beat yourself up learning to truly believe that his mercies are new every morning? That he knew who you were. Now listen, I, I know this kid. I, I don't believe in sloppy agape love and there's been a whole thing going around and God loves you and, and you just do whatever you want and try your best and you'll make heaven. That is not what the Lord says. Exactly. And, but I'm not going to even get into much of that doctrine this morning because the enemy it comes in, the Bible says, as a ray of light. So he's a deceiver. So he'll take some of the truths of God and pervert them just enough to deceive you and get you in a mess. 
And that was what he's done. So then what's that do? It takes, it takes the people that really need some mercy some days and makes them afraid to apply it because they don't want to get too far off the, the path. And so I came to talk to you this morning and remind, just simply remind you that God's mercies are new every morning. And we're going to look at some scriptures. So for days when you feel like you've missed the mark, and by the way, the, you know what missed the mark means? Whether that big translates it to when you make it back into Greek? Sin. But here's something that I, I found the enemy doesn't want you to know, and I'm not going to teach this whole theology today. I'm probably going to teach it later on today, actually. But uh, if I've got a big bullseye back there on the wall, and I pull back, and I'm doing my very best to hit it dead center, and I let my arrow fly, but it doesn't hit dead center, what did I just do? Yes, I missed my mark that I was aiming for. You know you can't miss something you're not aiming for? So he, so imagine, we'll talk about grace for a minute. Imagine that whole, you know, you've seen a bullseye. Everybody's seen a target with a bullseye? You know that last outer circle that before, if you don't hit it, you're going completely off the, you're going to miss it and going into air or going to the wall, right? Let's call that outer ring grace. Because God says, that, you know, his grace is sufficient in your weakness. God's grace is sufficient. A lot of people say it's unmerited favor. That also means it, that, that, that grace that causes you to overcome. So his grace, as long as you're aiming to hit the mark, his grace is helping you get better and better at hitting the bullseye. Amen. Not empowered you to stay in sin. Are you still with me? Yeah. I didn't plan to teach all this this morning. but uh, Now what happens if I... Uh, now I'm thankful that he has mercy for me when I miss the mark. And that he helps me to start correcting my aim, okay? Now, what happens when I know what I'm supposed to be doing and I'm hitting about half of them at the target and the other half I'm just letting them fly wherever I want to? Uh, that is called transgressions. And the Bible says the way of a transgressor is hard. Why? Because they're stepping outside the grace of God. They're choosing not to stay inside his covering. He's not punishing them. They're, ste they're choosing to step out of it. And God is allowing that because why he wants, he loves them and he wants them to correct their aim and get back under grace. Are you still with me? Yes. So the transgressions is hard, not because God wants it, but because people choose to make it that way, right? right. But guess what's even great news about those that's in transgression? God's mercy is still new every morning. And if they will repent and turn, they can get right back under grace. Now, that's not a sloppy agape. It's a painful thing. But I'm so thankful that he knew we were going to need it. And listen, but the longer I'm serving God, anytime I don't hit a bullseye, I feel like I've totally let my father down. But I'm still doing my level best to hit it. Paul said, oh, this wretched man that I am. Now, he wasn't talking about eventual sin. It was just meaning that he still had to wrestle with this flesh man. Whenever he'd been up into the third heavens, he'd been into the heavenlies. He'd been places, and I've got to be some of them places, but, but I've not been every place Paul was yet. But I, I know that anything that keeps me from going there, I don't like and I hate it about myself because I love living in the presence of God. Right. Come on. But I have to still remind myself as long as I'm on this earth that his mercies are new every morning and I can get back into listen, I don't have to wait for a priest once a year to forgive me so that, yes. and listen, I don't have to just be called a priest to get into the Holy of Holies Jesus is atoned so that I can walk in and I can have that fellowship Amen. and what does that fellowship help me do? Get my aim straighter encouraging me in places that I didn't think I once could ever shoot at Anybody still here this morning? Yes. And there's, but there's more that I hate to tell you about the bullseye that I'll go ahead and share this morning. You know what happens if you now listen? When I was growing up, I I was taught. I, I, I'm thankful for everything I was taught and experiences I had. But we were taught we were strict Pentecostals, not those back bomber long skirt, but we were strict holiness. And and uh, you know I didn't think I was going to graduate high school and. 
Uh, you know, if you did one thing wrong, you were going to fall away from God and not be saved anymore. And I don't believe in once saved, always saved. And I can prove that the doctrine of course will be come. But I also believe you don't fall away instantly. No. I was afraid if I said one wrong thing that I was going to split hell wide open. But you know what? I can make choices to bring myself outside his covering because then it goes from missing the mark, then to transgression. And if I keep choosing to slide, now then I'm going to get into iniquity, which is bondage. And that means that I do what I want, how I want, when I want, regardless, even though I know the word of God, but I'm choosing not to do the word. Now I brought myself, now it takes so now it takes prayer and anointing to, to bust me out of that place of bondage that I've been at. But so thankful, even for someone that's choosing to do that, guess what? His mercy is still new every morning. And he will let them think, if they will repent, he will put them right back under grace and they can go back to trying to hit the mark. And that is the good news of the gospel today. And I came to encourage you wherever you find yourself on that, the water's just fine. Come on in. Let bathe in the mercy of God. <laughs> start, start, don't stay down to wherever that last thing is that the enemy's beating you up with and sharpen your aim and start doing better and be encouraged. I feel like I spoke Wednesday night about how I felt like a lot of people are under pressure. And I remind them that of the scripture in Malachi chapter 3 that goes that talks about when the, that have we paid our tithes and offerings. You know, everybody talks about he'll pour out a blessing you can't contain. And everybody shouts on that one. And everybody misses the best part of that whole chapter. And the best part of the whole chapter is it says that when the devourer comes, after you've paid your tithes and offerings, when he comes, not if, it says then God will rebuke the devourer for your sake and your seed shall shall come to completion. But do you know what happens when you miss it or something? You start losing hope. And then you, then you stop stop believing that. Or, or maybe somebody didn't teach you accurately about giving and tithes and offerings and all the things that go with it. So whenever the enemy showed up, you weren't ready. But don't cast away, your, your Bible says don't cast away your confidence, which has great reward. You know one of the best ways I found not to cast away my confidence? I'll tell you. Learning to remind myself that his mercies are new every morning. I don't always have to figure out exactly the why. I just got to put the salve on and fix it. That's what I need to repent is. So I need to do those things. But the mercies are new. I can step right back in there. And I feel like this is for some specific people this morning. So let's lead some. I've quoted you a ton of scripture if you don't know that. How I many know we're a word church? Yes. Amen. We don't preach theory around here. Amen. None of those things. If it ain't in the word today, you don't need it. But Lamentations chapter 3. Uh, let's start in verse 22. Oh, let's start in verse 21. I don't know. It's also good. Eh, 18. I'll go with 18. 18. Yeah. Let's, I was going to not read any of this stuff because the first part of Lamentations, the guy sounds like he's depressed. You know, depression is a demonic, oppressing spirit. And listen, I didn't say you were in sin. I didn't say possessed. I said oppressed. Where if he can get you to think on it, he will. He'll suck the joy and life right out of you. Because those the Bible says the joy of your Lord is your strength. Now, I'm not beating you up, but maybe you need to maybe you've been beating yourself up. Oh, Christians aren't supposed to feel this with them. Apply the mercy of God. Forgive yourself to whatever trash the enemy thinks you've got. And then start getting in the word, start praising and worshiping, start renewing your mind. So you can overcome. Amen. 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 So it said, it, and I said, verse 18, my strength and my hope has perished from the Lord. Oh my goodness, what an awful confession. You know, my strength and hope has perished from the Lord. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Who said that? Jesus. On the cross. Because whenever sin had overtaken him, even God couldn't be around. Some of you have been there. But I'm so thankful that the, it's morning and the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. Come on. And his mercies are new every morning. Ha ha ha. 
19. Remember my affliction and my misery, the wormwood and the gall. Man, how many of you ever felt that way? Don't raise your hand. You're like, I just wish this season would end. And the Lord says, I wish you would change your attitude. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I have it on great authority, meaning my own life, that he doesn't change it until my attitude starts at looking, acting like his attitude. Come on. And that doesn't mean we don't go through things. Listen, the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus prayed to blood pour out. He said, Lord, if there be any way, take this cup from me. Come on, he was human just as much as we are. We don't always like to go through what we're going to go, what we're going through. But that doesn't mean that his mercy is new. It doesn't mean that joy is not coming. And when we get our heart right and our mind right, we open ourselves up for those things to flow through, to flow free, freely through us. And we didn't want to get that out. Verse 20. My, 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 my. My soul considers them and it's depressed. It's depressed. I'm depressed, Lord. He said, that pastor said depressed in church. That's demonic. I just said it was demonic, but I also know that, you know, the enemy uh, showed up to Jesus. You don't think you're not going to show up at your door trying to bring you stuff that don't belong to you? Come on. We talk about all time. Return to sender. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. John, yeah, John 10, 10. But Jesus said, I've come. You may have life and have it more abundantly. But you have to return it to sender. You can't go, oh, I'm so in the gold. I never, ever have dealt with depression. Liar. <laughs> All things don't bother me, Pastor. I've got the glory. Well, praise God. You've also got a lying spirit. You're not going to go heaven with it now. Come on. <laughs> Aren't you glad I don't always talk that straight to you? <laughs> but this, but how did he answer it? See, he didn't stop at just saying, I'm depressed. He went ahead and gave you the remedy right there. He said, but this I call to my mind. Bible said, come on. He said, renewing of your mind. That's what, that's what helps us. Think on these things. Philippians 4, whether these are love, those are pure, these are just, if there be any virtue, if there be any, be any praise. Think on these things. You can't always stop the enemy from sending you mail, but you can stop receiving it or recognizing it when it shows up on your door. And maybe you stopped and, and took the bait for a moment, but that doesn't mean you have to beat yourself up. You need to apply the mercy of God and then start applying the word of God like you've seen right here. I'm not going to beat you up. God's not going to beat you up. He said that's, what, that's why he did it. He just cares that you get where you need to be and the freedom is the place you need to be. Amen. Amen. Come on, are you with me? So then he says, uh, but this I call to my mind, therefore I have hope. I'm so thankful that God's hope isn't like our hope. That word hope, when you break it down, you know, all those big fancy uh, dictionaries, it means confidently anticipating the promises of God are yes and amen. It's not wishful thinking, it's confidently anticipating. I can't see it, it's right on the other side of that wall, but it's right there, it's coming, I know it is, Woo! I can't wait till it gets in. And when you do that in your mind, something starts happening. That's why the enemy wants you to cast away your confidence. He wants you to cast away your hope. Yes. But listen, he'd rather just keep you beat down and never lifting up. And how does he do that? He keeps you in a place where you where, where, you, where you are just beating yourself up for however, whatever the reason is you've got there. Whether it's self-inflicted or it's a trial or tribulation or you just did something dumb, you still need the mercy of God to pick yourself up, get your head right, and get back in the game. And ain't none of us worthy of his mercy. Ain't none of us good enough. Ain't none of us deserve it. Now, don't be an habitual offender. That's going to bring you a whole other mess. And you'll be out there, when I say, in iniquity. And you'll be in bondage. And then it's going to take uh, all kinds of stuff to get you free. But the good news is, all it actually takes is turning to God and saying yes and submitting. Yes. But for order for you to come to your right mind, it's probably going to take some people praying for you. So don't go that far. That's my advice. 
I'm not saying I won't come after you because I will. You may not even know it, but we can do a lot in the spirit realm. Right? The Lord's faithful love does not cease. Listen, this guy's talking about depression and soul. He's done some things, but he said God's love does not cease. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe in him. Come on. He didn't say all the saints. He said the world. That meant every sinner. I was a horrible, I, I have some big friends now, they're kind of the same thing I was, got to lead to the Lord, and they're like, oh, you wasn't that bad. I'm like, then you must have not really knew him. <laughs> then I have others that go, I can't believe you got saved. And God saved you, he can save anybody. <laughs> True stories. But you know what? I didn't have trouble applying the mercy when I first got saved. It was after I'd really honed my faith and sharpened my word, really started walking and becoming the man of God that he called me to be. And then when I missed the mark, it was so crushing to me. I know none of you have ever met that. But then I had to learn to get the word out and apply the mercy to my life, the same mercy that I've given other people. Same mercy I let other people had, I had to give it to myself. Right. So that I could start being the man that he called me to be to walk in faith. Otherwise, that listen, there's only either you're going forward with God or you're going backward with God. And sometimes the only way you're going forward is through his mercy. Yes. So then he goes, the Lord's faithful love does not cease. His compassion does not fail. He can't fail at it. You're not going to show up one day, you know. I, I used to do tons of prison ministry. I used to do all kinds of ministry until God spoke to me and said, listen, we're going to have to just uh, hone a couple of things because you're doing too much. Not that I don't have a hard court, not that I'm not going to raise up people out of here to go and do it, but he said there's only so much one person can do. But uh, do you know there wasn't a person in the prison that, that every, all of them, when they tell you their story, they're waiting for you to be shocked and disgusted so that they think that you, there's no compassion or mercy for them. You know, I never met one person that God's compassion wasn't there, that his mercy wasn't there. Now listen, you know, if I'd have been some of the family members of someone that's got hurt, maybe I would have had to work my faith to be able to forgive them. I'm not saying that it wasn't but God's compassion his love never failed. He never once said, you went too far. But if you, you know what happens when you're really serving God and you're really close with him all the time and see, then you miss that little tiny mark and all of a sudden you feel like you're 100 miles away from his presence. Sometimes I feel like that's more soul crushing than when I was complete heathen because I didn't know how good it was there. Right. But see, now we do. But repentance still faithful and just forgive us of all our sins. What did we say the sin was? Missing the mark. 1 John 1, 9, that's the new scripture. Yeah. And so he's faith, faithful and just to wash the Lord, please wash us clean from all unrighteousness. You know, I'm so glad he said all. Come on. Listen, I'm not giving anybody here a get out of uh, jail free card this morning. And that's why sometimes uh, the Lord... You know, when he gives me these messages, I'm, I'm very, I'm very, uh, I just want to get it right because I've seen so many people today abusing and preaching false things. But we should, and that doesn't mean we shouldn't talk about the mercy and grace of God. We need to talk about it. Yes. We need to use it. We need to appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. But we always need to use it to come up and out, not enable us to stay in the mess. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So, his, his compassion us, but they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Every morning, God's mercies are new. Just think, he, before the world was formed, 
I don't know how they had it, because listen, his ways are our ways. If you've been our race of Bible, his thoughts are our thoughts. Some days I'm have all kinds of questions when I get to heaven. As you've heard me say many times, I don't know how a brown cow eats green grass and makes white milk, but I know God does it, right? Come on. I don't know how he does these things. He does. I, I don't know. I'm not that smart. The, but sometimes the smarter people get the dumber the things they say. But that's another thing. <laughs> I've been around some people with never mind, just shut up, Pastor. <laughs> but it's you know, with him and Jesus sitting around going, Well, how often do you think we should give them some mercy? Just when they ask for it, or how how should we make this available to them? They're like, oh, yeah. You know you gave them free will, right? Yeah, I do. Uh, I think we should give them mercy every morning. <laughs> Every morning when they get out of bed, before, before their feet hit the floor, I think they ought to have a, an option to put on a new right robe of righteousness. Come on. Let's, I, I hope this is getting in your spirit this morning. Yes, I'm not preaching some great big thing this morning, but I uh, I feel like this is for the, this body. So when you get up in the morning, when, when the devil reminds you of all the missteps of the day before, just wash yourself in the blood of the Lamb, yes. uh, apply the Word of God, and then put on that new mercy, that new robe of righteousness, and say, man, today, I, I'm going to do better. I, I'm going to hit the mark. I'm going to be a, I, 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 I'm going to make the devil wish I never got out of bed today. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You know, if he can keep you in bed, he will. That's where the depression part comes in. Yes. And how does he do that? He keeps you he, he keeps you concentrated on all the things you feel like you have no control over. Well, guess what? You ain't got no control over none of them anyways, but God does. And when you put your hope in him and hope in the promises of God, yes. then it causes you to start coming up and yes. coming out. And then if he can't keep you beating up and thinking about all the stuff you can't control, then he starts trying to get you to beat up about all the dumb mistakes you made. Man, there's days he brings up stuff for me from 30 years ago. 30 years. First John 1, listen, he washed it clean. He cast as far as the east as the west. Never be remembered again. Why should I be thinking on it? That's where Hebrews 1, 9 comes in. He says he'll purge even my very consciousness. You know what purge means? Wipe it out. They smell it. But do you know how I feel like where I have the right to apply those verses? First, I've got to put on his mercy. Mm. Come on. You want to start believing you're the head and not the tail? You want to believe you're above and not beneath? First thing you've got to do is put on the mercy of God. Yes. And you know what? Uh, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over is what comes back unto you. If you want mercy, you also need to show mercy. Come on. But there was the parable of the man with the seeds. He went to his master. He had great debts, and his master forgave him. What did he do? He went and beat up every little person, owed him, owed him a few pennies, and then, and then he got in big trouble. What does that mean? Listen, I know I need mercy. I know I need compassion. So I've spent my whole life giving more than that to others so that I would always be in the credit section. I'm being honest. And you know what can happen? You can live that way so long it just becomes who you are, not something you do. Right. I'm going to say it again. You should be living it for so long that it becomes part of who you are, not just something you do. Yes. Uh, well, let's just jump back up to verse 14 for a minute. I have become a laughing stock to all my people and their song all the day. You know, there's so many times believers today, we all, people feel this way, they do all this stuff. The enemy's been saying all the dumb things for thousands of years. He ain't got no new stuff. And the same <laughs> word that applied then applies now. Y'all still with me? Yes. All right. So the next verse you can turn to. Glory. Psalms 136. Psalms 136. We're almost done. Simple message today. Starting in verse 1. Starting in verse 1. Psalms 136. Everybody there say amen. 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 
give thanks to the Lord. How do you enter into his courts? Come on. What we gotta be thankful, then we gotta be praising. That's how we get into the Holy of Holies. You want to accept his mercy, get a thankful heart. You know you can't be hateful if you're thankful. Come on. You know, hateful people, they've been meditating on everything made them hateful. That's how they stay that way. And the longer they meditate on it, the more bitter and sour they get. Yes. And they don't give nobody no mercy, but guess what? They're also not giving themselves no mercy. Yeah, right. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His loving kindness endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, to the God of gods, for his loving kindness endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his loving kindness endures forever. Now, I want to tell you something here that they teach you in the cemetery, I mean seminary school, those top Bible colleges and that, those places. They teach you for somebody to really get what you're saying, you need to repeat it three times. And if you repeat it three times, then they'll stick in their brain more. You know, before man figured that out, it sure looks like to me God started putting it in the scriptures. Because right here, three different times, he's telling you to be thankful and realize that God, his kindness endures forever. He wants you to get that. He repeated it three times. If you find other places, he does it in the Word of God. Before man thought it was a good idea, God already knew it. Let's <laughs> always get a kick out of that. So, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and for his loving kindness endures forever. To him alone does great wonders, for his loving kindness endures forever. Does he, you think he's wanting you to realize that his loving kindness endures forever? Now, here's where a lot of people get in trouble. There's nothing you can do to earn God's love, and his loving kindness goes on forever. Amen. All right? Amen. But his blessings and curses and life and death is a choice. There's nothing you can do to, 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 uh, accept, to either make him love you more or to make, you love, make him love you less. But he did set before the word of God, which is the roadmap to either blessings or curses. If you feel like you've got some stuff, listen, there's no such thing as karma. There's just, there, there's just either you're lining up with the word or you're not. God will not be mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he reap. If you don't like what you're reaping, unless you're in a trial or tribulation, those are different, then you need to change what you're sowing. But that still doesn't have any effect on God's love for you. But it will affect the blessings and curses in your life or life and death. Y'all still with me? So, his love endures forever. To him alone does great wonders for his loving kindness endures forever. To him by understanding made the heavens for his loving kindness endures forever. Are y'all starting to get something? You think he wants you to, he wants you to settle it once and for all that he loves you. Period. No if, no but, no I did this, I did that. I, he loves you. To him who spread out the earth above the waters for his loving kindness endures forever. To him who, I missed, missed the verse, verse 5. To him by understanding made the heavens for his loving kindness endures forever. Back down to verse 7. To him who made the great lights for his loving kindness endures forever. The sun to rule by day for his loving kindness endures forever. The moon and stars to rule by night for his loving kindness endures forever. To him who stuck down the Egyptian firstborn for his loving kindness endures forever. And brought out Israel from among them for his loving kindness endures forever. With a strong hand and without rich strong for his loving kindness endures forever. To him who divided the Red Sea for his loving kindness endures forever. And made Israel to pass through its midst for his loving kindness endures forever. But overthrew Pharaoh and his army in the Red Sea for his loving kindness endures forever. Now I want you to realize a lot of these things weren't easy times they went through. But each one of them, his love never failed. Now, they made some dumb decisions in the desert. They got stuck out there for 40 years. They even made some false idols. I mean, how dumb can you be? You know what? We still do it today. I mean, they, somebody's like, well, if I had a cloud of fire following me by night and the other clouds got spiritual, well, super glory was showed up, I wouldn't make those dumb decisions. I've seen people do it. All the time. But the one thing you need to realize is even when God was ready to strike him, I mean, there was half the group that got swallowed up by the earth. I mean, he was a little ticked a few times. 
But they made those choices, but what never changed was his loving kindness. For those that chose him, his love never failed. Y'all still with me? And then when Jesus came, he said, whether you choose me or not, my love is not going to fail. But you get to choose what kind of life you live. Do you want to live under my grace or do you want to be in transgression or iniquity? To him who led his people through the wilderness for his loving kindness endure forever. To him who struck great kings for his loving kindness endure forever. And killed many kings for his loving kindness endure forever. Sino king of Amorites for his loving kindness endure forever. Ogog king of the Bashan for his loving kindness endure forever. And gave their land as an inheritance for his loving kindness endure forever. Even a heritage to Israel his servant for his loving kindness endure forever. He remembered us in our low estate for his loving kindness endure forever. And has delivered us from our adversaries. For his loving kindness endures forever. Yeah. Now notice he didn't say made it so we never had adversaries. Because his loving kindness endures forever. Mm. Wouldn't that be great if that's what he said? But the longer you expect that kind of relationship with your Lord, the more the enemy's going to be able to sneak in with a spirit of depression and oh. rob you from yes. the power of God. Yes. Because he didn't say, he, 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 he always, he delivers us from them. There's never a doubt. You always win. He said, be of good courage. I've already overcome the world. 1 John 5, 4. Be of good courage. I've already overcome the world. He said, but you're going to have trials and tribulations in this world. Am I happy about it? No. But you know what? If I, all I think about is the trials and tribulations, I'm going to miss all the joy, peace, and mercies that God has for me upon this earth. Yes. God wants to make you a walking billboard of the goodness of God. And that makes you like the children. Listen, when they brought the children of Israel out after 40 years, there wasn't one feeble one among them. They'd been there forever. They were old age. They had the same clothes on, the same stuff, and not one of them was sick. We got an even better covenant now with Jesus. Amen? Amen. But do you know where it starts? Every morning when you wake up. When your feet hit the floor tomorrow, I want you to wake up and go, Lord, I thank you for your mercy. Yes. I'm going to be a powerhouse for the Lord today. I pray that it gets in your spirit. I know it's a simple message. But if you apply it, your, your attitude and your mindset will change every day. Your spirit man will change. You can keep reading that, but it's still the same message. His love endures forever. No end to it. Amen. Is there anybody here this morning that... Uh, doesn't know Jesus as a Lord and Savior and uh, being saved from their own self. If that's you, just raise your hand and we'll pray with you. I see that hand. Amen. Anybody else this morning? Glory. Man, I'm so thankful. Well, let's all pray together, okay? Just repeat after me. Jesus, I believe. Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross, on the cross. With, me on your mind. with me on your mind. And I believe you went down to hell and whipped Satan and rose again on the third day so that I can be free. And I ask you to wash me clean of all my sins. And Jesus, I make you Lord of my life today. And Holy Spirit, come in and clean house. The Lord, I thank you for those that made a choice today for you. And as pastor, I stand in the gap for them. And enemy, I serve you notice. They're under his anointing, under his grace. And so uh, every demonic assignment of the enemy, we cancel today. We rebuke it, send it back to the pits of hell. And Lord, I thank you for the peace and the joy of God. 
that they're experiencing life, they're going to experience the Lord, even, even at their homes and places. We put the blood on the door post, the post that the death angel has to pass by. And having I serve you notice, you no longer have a legal right to torment them or be around them. In Jesus' strong name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.